Hi, this is Tony Holland, founder and CEO of Global Premier Benefits, an integrity company. I want to talk to you guys today about the early challenges for the nation. I want to address that brand new agent because I was once one back in February of 1994. Been in the business longer than some people that are looking at this have been alive. Yes, 28 years. And so I understand that from, you know, the ground up. You know, I started out of college, uh, had a little short stint on Wall Street, didn't work out, found out real quick why they're called stockbrokers, just failed miserably, was living out of my van, got started with a company called American Income uh, out of Waco, Texas, and, you know, I was, like I said, living out of the van, struggling, how I'm going to make this thing happen, bartending, waiting tables on the side, and I got in this business, got my license, and one of the immediate challenges I realized was a big difference between me and many of the veterans in the group. And I think it's a big mistake that I made. And I see a lot of agents making this mistake. They become lead junkies. They don't understand the power of getting a referral and many referrals. And I didn't understand that. This guy, John in the office, just was, was kicking my butt every week. I'm like, what is he doing different? He kept smiling at me. I got you again this week. I got Because I was a hustler. I was working 80, 90 hours a week. I, was, I, was, I wanted to get out of that van. <laughs> I wanted to change my life. I was definitely motivated. You know, I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. And John was like working less. He had a wife and kids. I'm like, how do you beat me every week? He says, man, I'm getting referrals. He goes, you see this? He had a little page of all his referrals out of each house. He goes, you got to take every lead that you get and get it not just to make the sell off the lead, but then you got to create an insurance policy on your business, on your leads. I said, what do you mean? He goes, referrals are your insurance policy on your business. That will ensure that you're, you're, you know, you will always have somebody to talk to. Leads, he taught me. Are, are finite. There's only so many. What happens if our manager doesn't give any city leads? Or what happens if the lead department blows up? What happens if the lead drop doesn't work out? You got to have your referrals. Referrals are infinite. I'm like, dang it. And immediately we had this thing called the co-health card. We, it was a discount health card program. We have one like that now. It's even better. It's unbelievable. Uh, offers free vision, prescription, hearing, dental, chiropractic, and numerous other things. And that's how I started getting referrals. It was a, it was a discount health program. Um, and it really was an amazing benefit. And I started getting referrals off every lead to the point within three to four months, I didn't need leads anymore. I wasn't begging my manager, wait, knocking on his door, I need leads. So that was one of the biggest mistakes I made out the gate, not understanding the value of a lead uh, and a value of referral off a lead. Leads to me, uh, or to me should be a, a catalyst for other sales to get into the grassroots. So I started doing grassroots after that off each and every lead. You want to take every one of their lead cards, whether they buy or not, and pivot that and get referrals through grassroots and other friends and family members. And my business exploded. I went from averaging seven to eight sales a week back in the day to quadrupling that. Because think about this. The average closing ratio of a lead is about 20 to 30% depending on your skill set. The average closing ratio of a referral is about 80 to 90%. So which would you rather have more of? So I figured out real quick what John was. It was a basic numbers game. He was seeing way more referrals than I did. So if he, if, if we we're going head to head, and I had 10 appointments today, and he had 10, and he had 10 referrals, and I had 10 lead cards, the best I was going to do was sell 3 out of 10. He was selling 8 or 9 out of 10. It was just you know, it was a no brainer after that. So I immediately, whatever lead I got, whether they bought or not, got referrals, got grassroots, got their, you know, VFW, American Legion. I got their, their, their church, their food bank, whatever they were associated with their club, their lodges. And I maximized the power of referrals as a, I know it's one of the biggest mistakes I see new agents get in this business, not maximizing referrals. You also got to do the power 100 list. You know, you know, you, the power 100 list was taught back eons ago in the business by New York life, met life. You write a list of a hundred people that, you know, that know other people in the demographics you're servicing, write down a hundred people, you know, friends, family, relatives. I think that's powerful. You need to do that as well and build out your business. So some, some advice I would give uh, to new agents that are joining our team. Another quick thing, maximize referrals. But when you come in, you need to understand sales is an art form. It's just like dancing, singing, writing, playing a professional sport. You got, you got to develop. A lot of people come and say, well, Tony, 
I'm motivated. I want to go to work, but they don't know, understand, you know, that the sales is a skill set. It's just like people go many years of study, become a lawyer or a doctor or a CPA or another profession. You got to understand it's a skill set you must develop. It's not just speaking to people and knowing your product. Those are all important, having a positive attitude, but you have to have the skill sets. Do you know how to yes close? You got to know how to yes close. What I mean by a yes close, you just make your clients say yes. You follow me so far, Ms. Johnson? Yes. You see why so many seniors in the community really appreciate what we're doing for them? Yes. Is this your address? Little minor yeses along the way help build up to the major yes. You know, do you know how to do an oblique comparison close? And what that is, it's just, you know, uh, you know you're comparing like bottled water, for example. You know, people, you know, say, the, you know, you're trying to get an investment of $30 for that client for a specific, you know, insurance policy, but yet, you know, they, they spend, you know, two to three dollars on bottled water, you know, a day or a cup of coffee. And you compare that, Miss Johnson, it's just, you know, you know, a half a cup of coffee a day to get your plan set up. I used to do that with lottery tickets because I worked in the urban communities in Baltimore, D.C., Philadelphia. And I would see lottery tickets on the desk and they would tell me, I can't afford this $50. I'm like, Miss Johnson, I saved 50 lottery tickets right there. I said, all we're saying is a lottery ticket a day. <laughs> you know, you're going to give up one lottery ticket a day. If you, you're buying 40 and 50 of them in a day, you can give up one a day for your insurance. So, you know, you got to do what's called the oblique comparison close. And how you learn that, you got to tap in to some of the best in the business, like Tom Hopkins, Brian Tracy, Zig Ziglar, there's many others out there that'll teach you the basics of sales. It is an art form. And, and if I can go back and redo some things, some people ask a ton, if you can go back to 1994 when you started, I would have, key thing I would have done back in the day besides maximizing referrals, making sure, you know, polishing up on my sales skills. I was listening to tapes and CDs all the time, but I would also have hired a personal assistant. And then I would have, you know, and I'm telling me the personal assistant. Some people say, I can't afford to hire a personal assistant. What about your mom? What about your wife or your girlfriend or your boyfriend? Somebody that can help you with the business. I think I would have maximized that as well, besides the referrals and polishing up on my skill sets in terms of sales understanding it was it's a skill set. But I would have had somebody do the twenty dollar an hour work so I can do the thousand dollar an hour work. Okay. Have somebody help me with the paper, have somebody help set my appointments, have somebody take care of the twenty dollar stuff, the little stuff so I can focus on recruiting or selling. And and that leads to my second part of that question. I would have maximized it took me years to finally start building an agency because I just loved selling. I just didn't think people could do it the way I can do it. I was making three, four hundred thousand dollars a year, you know, back in those days. I'm like, why why would I want to build a team? I mean, to me, if you got a gift and you're blessed with that, the, the, the gift of influence, the gift of coaching and teaching, which I believe I do have that, why not pay it for it? In the beginning, I didn't want to do that. You know, I didn't have the patience enough. So maybe I should have had better patience to want to work and help build people. So I would have maximized the agency building concept out the gate. You know, and I think I would have probably, <laughs> I mean, no telling where I would have been and how many more lives I can change. So I would have done that. So if there's one thing also that I wish uh, I knew uh, when I got started, again, it would go back to the power of building the team. I think it all, I would have started, it, it took me probably about six, six years really to really hone in on becoming a GA and an MGA. I, I, I I think I should have started that first year, maybe, maybe in that second year, but I would have built teams right out the gate and started teaching people and coaching people and leading people to do what I was doing and have the patience. I'm not the most patient person. I'll just ask my wife. <laughs> She'll tell you, I'm very impatient. So through the grace of God, I've learned how to do that and called on to why you build teams and building teams is not about making 10, 20, $30 million a year. It's about what you do for those people. Building a team is not about the override. I just want to make sure we're clear on that because the overrides are tremendous. The renewal overrides are even more tremendous, you know, but it's about the lives that you change on your team. You know, I love seeing my teammates win. I love seeing my teammates put that dream board together. And they're knocking off the house and knocking off the trip to Disney World. and They're knocking out, you know, their, their debts. I mean, I've had, I have many of my team members that are debt free that have bought their second, third, and even fourth homes that are driving, you know, luxury cars like Bentleys and BMWs and Cadillacs and Lexus. I mean, they're living the dream. They're buying boats. I mean, it's just, you know, it's not all about the material stuff, but it's about the self-esteem they built. They came from nothing like I did. Now they're, you know, they're living, you know, the, the lifestyle they've always dreamed of. And they do it in a very short period of time, two or three years. They're living that lifestyle. And it's amazing to see that happen 
for just regular people out there. You don't need to be a brain surgeon. You just got to have the right attitude, willing to work hard and be coachable and be coachable. So I hope this helped today. Uh, if you want to learn how to get started with me, uh, just, you know, just reach out. Simple email with your resume or question will help you out. Go to info at globalpremierbenefits.com. That's info at globalpremierbenefits.com. Or you can even call me. I, I give out my phone number. A lot of IMOs say, Tony, you're crazy if you're doing it. What are you doing that for? I was like, I want to touch the people. <laughs> I love my people. You know, I don't care what walk of life they're from or what challenge they've been through. I think God put us here for a reason to impact, Im impact and change lives. You can reach me at 443-253-3634. I'll repeat that again. I know I sound like a little commercial on TV. 443-253-3634. <laughs> Look forward to working with you very soon. And may God continue to bless you. Thank you for letting me share. Thank you.